something in there. Boy, I just can't get it out. of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are diversity, there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh at one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Amen. And maybe some people have been come. It's like when you give people homework and they feel pressure not to come and then do it or something. Did y'all get your homework done? Okay. Uh, not really. Yes, no, somewhat. Not at all. All the above. Huh? Amen. Amen. I don't know. I just keep trying. I've had people say, man, it'd be good, Pastor, if you give us something to work on for the following week. I don't even know why. I'm going to need that breath one day. It's like I wish I wouldn't have wasted that breath right there. Man, the week before. <laughs> yes, sir. What, what was it? I was here. Man, you got a real good excuse, man. You got a real got some good excuse. That's a good one. It was uh, over this, dealing with the, the fruit of the, no, the nine spirit, gifts. nine gifts of the spirit. In our handouts, he gives us breakdowns and then also this book that I've been read I have or actually already read I had interject kind of both of them together which they pretty much coincide with one another okay well let's start with the um, operation or declarative gifts or also called inspirational gifts okay inspiration gifts <clears throat> you can write down the extra ones I kind of give to you, you know, like, so these first three, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, we'll talk about that. Uh, it is in your paper, yeah, I mean, if you look at uh, page 10. I'm so sorry, where are we starting with this one? Page 10. Um, the operation, declarative gifts. Thank you. Or also known as inspiration gifts. Page 10 is where we're starting, where it says, Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, a lot of, a lot of gifts, as you, as you find, as you begin to read and kind of study them some, and, you know, maybe while we're still going on this, you'll get time to kind of dive into them a little bit more. Um, a lot of them kind of coincide with one another. Sometimes it's hard to tell when one is operating versus another. Okay. Um, I mean, the main thing God is moving, he's doing this sovereign work, and we're allowing this gift to flow through. Um, but let's start with prophecy. So it's the God-given ability to speak forth supernaturally in a known language, basically whatever language you speak in, ours being English, as the Spirit gives utterance. Okay. Um, or another meaning pretty much the same, the anointed speaking forth of words of edification, exhortation, and comfort, which is very, very key. Yes, ma'am? In the first definition, what was that word? I like that one better. I can't remember what you said. Read the first God-given ability to speak forth supernaturally in a known language. Supernaturally. Supernaturally, yes. yes. Now, that's actually, in, that's actually in, in here. If you go to page... 
um, 13. Um, if you go to page 13, you actually have that. Okay. The God given ability to speak for supernatural in all language. Okay. So, I mean, I'm really not saying too much that's not in here. I'm actually, like I said, I'm blending too. I'm blending the teaching that Pastor Jeff Johns had and then also the book that I read from Lester Summerall. And so I'm intertwining the two and then just kind of with my own language on some things also. But, <clears throat> but most of the study came from these two sources. You know, and that's what I wrote down also in my, my notes. So when I was reading, when I was first started reading and studying this, I was like, wow, you know, this, it just was good to me. I just thought, you know, sometimes just to have knowledge of what we can do and how we can move, at least for me, it, it's important. Um, hopefully, you know, begin to come important to each one of us too. Because a lot of times I feel like we, sh well, we definitely shortchange ourselves. And we don't walk and live in our full potential and ability. And, you know, that's kind of even um, part of the message uh, from Sunday um, when Emmanuel was ministering. He was talking about the kingdom of God and walking in the kingdom and walking in our full potential. And, you know, which, which she, there was a lot, a lot of information, you know. That's why one reason I said it's good to go back once they put it out there to watch it because it was a lot. But he said a lot of good things and things, some of the things I've heard before. But actually, some of the things that I heard before, and then as he reset it, just made me really think. Like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm starting to kind of get a hold of it, to just really just lean and just trust on him. You know, I mean, I, I, I think I've lived. Well, I can say I, I know I have a lot of my life trying to be in control of everything, and I, I just can't be in control of everything. A lot of times, you know, God has interjected and moved, and I'm like, well, I got no control over that, and God help me. He did that. But man, now I'm just, I mean, but just really trying to really rest in it. And I've been asking myself, well, how do you really do that? You know, I mean, yeah. I've been hearing different preachers say this, and, well, you need the keys. And when you get the keys, all you got to do is just, well, then how do you really use the key? You know, I mean, it's like I almost want them to say, if you do, if you walk five steps, then it happens. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and it's, sometimes you don't necessarily have the answer like that. And, and I get a lot of general answers, but I'm un also understanding that it's correct. I'm actually getting some of the answers I got when I first was trying to get saved. Received the Holy Ghost. And I've heard this, and I heard this said even while I was seeking the Lord and tarrying for the Holy Ghost. And I've heard even other people say, because you hear people say, oh, he's right there, he's right there. Just let go. And then somebody else says, hold on, hold on. Well, am I supposed to let go? Am I supposed to hold on? Which one am I supposed to do? I mean, man, don't give me two different definitions. Of like, can somebody give me something? Like, I can hear people saying, let go, let go, let go. And there's somebody else saying, hold on. Well, which is it? Both is right. Actually, both of them, you know, somebody's saying, let go. They're saying, let go of yourself. Let go of your will. Let go of your own physical body. Or, you know, let God have control. Let go. And it's also saying, hold on to what, to what you feel. And you, you're pressing in. You're starting to feel God. Hold on to that. Don't let go to that. So he's saying both. Let go and hold on. Like, and so, like, I was just talking to the pastor, uh, another pastor, and we was just talking about, our inheritance, oh, it was good, it was good, so he didn't come teach that. But he was just talking about how everything was already made for Adam and Eve. Everything was already made. You know, we look at some of the blessings that we get, he's like, man, that, that's, really just, that's really just the icing on the cake. Some of that's the cherry on the top. Everything, we, we have so much more that's just ours, just because we inherited just because we're joint heirs with Christ. So naturally my mind said, well, how do I receive it? I hear what you're saying. Sounds good. I, it it kind of identifies my spirit. I hear that. But how do I receive it? He said, when you believe it. I'm like, well, man. So knowing it and believing is two different things. Because there's things that I know. There's things that I understand. Maybe I should say it like yes, that. There's things that I understand because I can read the word and I comprehend and I understand. But I, 
when I really stop and really think about it, there are some things I just haven't fully walked into or believed maybe for myself. And that doesn't like ostracize me and be like, oh, you're not walking in the kingdom, right? You're going to hell. You know, this ain't even about heaven or hell. It's just, it's just about just receiving more of our fullness and the rights that we have. And so I feel like I'm kind of getting it. You know, um, there, there's some things, let's say when it comes to money, let's say when it comes to jobs, stuff like that, man, I'm, I'm not even sweating, not even a little bit, never have. Uh, and I say never have, um, I haven't been happy with some of the jobs that I had, especially like when I first moved to Indianapolis. It was like, Lord, what is going on here? I need a better job. But I still had a job. It just wasn't the job that I wanted. However, I just knew God was going to take care of me. But then there's other areas that have seemed like, ah, I can't just believe here like I do here. And I... I don't have the whole answer and wonder, am I overthinking it? Am I thinking it's not for me? I don't know, but I'm kind of feeling like I'm starting to really just rest. Like I'm almost like just expecting the thing. Like I'm just expecting it. Because I have a right to expect it. Not like I'm demanding God, like you're going to do this. No, I'm just expecting it because I'm a child. Yes. And I'm slowly but surely, it's like I'm starting to see little things happening and not just in my life, but even in other people's lives, just off a simple prayer and petition unto God. And I feel like, okay, 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 I feel like, I feel like my faith is increasing in that. And so that's the same thing even with these gifts. You know, we have to, one, understand and believe. I think maybe we have a little understanding. As I began to go through some, I was like, man, I've operated in some of these before and maybe didn't even understand that's what I was doing. And then there are a couple but I feel like I move in more than any other. But there are some I've moved in and didn't even realize it. It's like, oh, that's what that was, okay. But I want to be able, I want God to use me. I want the gifts to be able to flow through me. And so I'm, I'm, I'm requesting, I'm asking more. And not just for me, even you, even this congregation. I mean, I want His Spirit to be able to have free reign in this place. Because that's going to help the body. He said, I give it to every man to profit, to profit the body. So with the gift of prophecy, and it's, it's different from the office of a prophet. Okay? So you got the five-fold ministry. I think me and Sister Katika was talking about this maybe about a month or so ago, doing it with apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists. Okay, so if you hear people say the five-fold ministry, that's what they're talking about. Apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists. Um, I've heard teaching on it even like a hand, considered a thumb, like the apostle, index finger, the prophet, because the prophet points to the future. Um, teacher, having a balance, being able to really teach. The pastor being the ring finger. I would say the pastor is married to the church. And, and then this being the evangelist who actually goes out, who was sent out, <clears throat> concerned about the soul. That's just a good way to remember it. Well, the office of a prophet speaks towards the future. The gift of prophecy is not necessarily talking about the future. The gift of prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. So, you know, there, there are times, and, and, and this is not by your own natural mind, but it's under the unction and anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Would an example be uh, at the camp, the lady that spoke out to the man, you know, Yes. That was, okay. Yes. And, 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 and really, it was, it was so, and I, had, I thought about that. I thought about that example exactly. Um, no, 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 she wasn't necessarily a prophet. She moved in the gift of prophecy in um, this spiritual gift. And for a moment, I was kind of thinking, man, did she have a word of knowledge? It really wasn't a word of knowledge because she didn't specifically know something that God revealed to her. But she did exhort, edify, and bring comfort to Emmanuel, you know, by the things that she began to say. She began to understand maybe where he was at. Um... 
And I think she even spoke some things. The sister critique, I know me and you had talked or whatever. I was like, man, she was, she was on point. So it wasn't that she was necessarily being a prophet. She just was moving under this spiritual gift. Understand the difference? The, the office of a prophet, most of the time, I mean, they can, he can move under the gift of the prophecy, pro, prophecy, but most of the time, the office of a prophet speaks to the future. Okay. Now, this particular gift of prophecy can almost be blended with the word of knowledge. We'll get to that, but the word of knowledge is, is, is something revealed to you that only God could have known. And God gives the word of knowledge unto someone. You know, we've, we've had that happen, you know, a couple times. Maybe a little more than that. Yes, sir. So, I've run into different prophets. Uh, what does one like do to, I guess, pronounce himself as a prophet if he never prophesied or vice versa? You know, I'm pretty sure that first lady, she wasn't a prophet. Okay, I mean, uh, a true prophet is going to eventually is going to prophesy. But he's not giving. But I'm. Well, I guess my thing is, what gives you the right to call yourself a prophet? Um, God. Okay. God, and I also will say this: I think there ought to be some, there ought to be some governance. You know, I think there ought to be some governance. I'm, I'm personally leery of anybody, to be honest, that are self-proclaimed without anybody who has spoken to their lives and gave some confirmation. You know, that don't mean a man can't be wrong, but I'm always, I'm a little leery of that. Meaning this, I mean, you, you just popped up out of nowhere. Now, not, not the first thing, you pop out of nowhere, I'm wondering if you're an angel. You know, I mean, you ain't got no credibility. You don't have no lineage to no, no congregation, nothing. I'm wondering, either you're an angel or you off. Well, I'm really, really kind of, because where's the accountability? You know, then, then, then who's the apostle in your life? Who's the pastor in your life? Who are you tied to in the other areas of ministry that keeps you accountable? If nobody keeps you accountable, you're a dangerous person. Yes, ma'am. Do you feel like you know a prophet? Uh, sometimes, yes. Yes, I do. I guess I'm just because I, I'm journeying back and I'm wondering, have I ever been a prophet? I don't know of a prophet. Okay. Yeah. So I was just curious if you, I mean, that would, you know, if you yeah. knew you, someone you, that you've met, You've met a prophet, you just maybe just didn't understand or didn't realize it. Is it somebody that you can say who it is so we can, so we would know or no? And would it be someone that moves in the office of prophecy? I'm, I'm talking no, no, talk, no, talk about there's a difference between the office of a prophet right, and the gift of prophecy. I'm speaking of a you know, prophet now. Have you, do you know a prophet? Eddie moves in the office of a prophet. I've never heard of that. Maybe you just haven't paid attention. Like when he be oh, when he like God want me to tell y'all. You know, well, I mean, but some some of the things he had actually spoken, some of the things he had actually spoken came to pass in truth. Oh. Not not just, and I mean, not just speaking off just because it sounds good. I mean, actually, and I I I, I, I believe and, and I really believe through spirit that that is his office. Now, he feels he has some other offices, too, okay? I know I've spoken to him personally about it, but I really see and understand this. Some of these other ones, eh, let's just kind of wait on that. You know, but, you know, I mean, in one sense, I mean, you know, he'd be like, um, you can say what you want to say, this, that, and the other, or whatever, you know? See, I mean, that, that's all I'm saying as far as the governance, you know? I, you know, but I, I understand, and I, I've seen so I, I use him because he's close here in that sense. But there's some other ones that I've personally met, that I've sat in conferences, I've sat in other church services, and the Spirit agreed. And there's some that I've met, the Spirit does not agree. Yes, ma'am. No, and uh, you know another one is uh, Sister Sister Jan's um, mom's husband. He says, "Thus said the Lord." 
You know, he, but not, sometimes what he's doing is actually giving an interpretation of tongue. Oh. Okay. See, that's, that's where we're getting ready. To, we're going to kind of get into that. We're going to have to get into that too, dealing with the inspirational gifts. Because just saying, thus says the Lord, doesn't make it a prophet. And we, we may piggyback off of these spiritual gifts, dealing with the fivefold ministry a little bit, just to kind of give an understanding. Okay. Of, of what they are, and I'm probably just kind of entwine some of them as we go along. Maybe that might help too. But just proclaiming, thus saith the Lord, doesn't necessarily mean I'm a prophet. And sometimes the interpretation can come, and sometimes that can be kind of. Uh, and then sometimes it can be, and it come right on point, you'd be like, that was God. That's God there. And sometimes it's like, mm, I'm putting that on the shelf. You know, I'm trying not to discredit it. I'm not trying to shoot somebody down. I mean, it ain't feeling right with me. But I just set it on the shelf and wait and see what that one is because I don't know about that. You know, I have a habit. Now, this is one of my faults. I have a habit of just trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. Period. I personally feel like that's, I personally kind of feel like that's part of a pastor's heart. A lot of pastors I know, I don't mean everybody is, I just feel, but a lot of pastors I know seem to give people the benefit of the doubt. Not all, most, quite a few. Now, some pastors begin to change, and then some pastors, you mean, you're guilty before proven innocent. You know, it ain't you innocent, you just automatically guilty. You're just pretty much pessimistic. You're, you're on the guard on everybody. But that usually became because of life trials, life circumstance caused them to put those guards up, but they wasn't necessarily always like that. You know, most pastors, though, that's why I said they're kind of married to the church. Usually it's something innate within them, within that call, within that grace of that anointing of that call that allows them to be touchable, allows them to touch people. You know, and to be able to have people come over, to be able to go to their house, to be able to, they just have that, and I mean, they just have that compassion of nurturing and wanting to see people do well and all that. You know, not saying nobody else does, but that just seems to be more of a characteristic of a pastor. You know, but when you move in the gift of prophecy, and I, there probably have been times. And, oh, I know there's times I have moved in this particular gift and didn't even realize it. Because I knew it was the Holy Ghost that gave me the words to say that seemed to just click with the individual and allow it to bring edification, comfort, or exhortation. You know, it, you know, it builded them up. You know, so, uh, let's see, because I wrote that edification, edification, huh? Okay, edification means to build up. Okay, it can, it can help a man or a woman to pull them up out of fear, to build them up, to strengthen them. It may even help someone out of sin or shortcomings, but never just to rebuke. Okay, never just to rebuke. And I mean, even when Paul, um, you know, he, he did it through the teaching of the Word. You know, he gave correction and, and stability but he wasn't doing it from the gift of prophecy. He may have been doing it out of the office of an apostle, pastor, prophet, that kind of thing. But usually when he's speaking from a prophet, he's speaking future tense. Exhortation is encouragement. Okay? You can exhort one to holiness. You can exhort somebody to consecration or separation. Somebody can come and almost, I mean, under the unction, and not necessarily from preaching, somebody can almost stand out of the power of God, just begin to talk about a separation and a call to holiness, and God began to move throughout the whole congregation and make the whole congregation almost, you know what I mean, just feel a sense of repentance, conviction, and even encouragement, like, Lord, I can do this. You know, like that, that word broke me down just by, you know, uh, Brother Gary testifying. Just by, I mean, you could feel the power of God. I mean, like it just broke me down, split me up. You know, I felt like just falling down and worship, but it kind of encouraged me too. Like, man, I need, I need to walk in this thing. I need to walk holiness. And, you know, on, on whoever, because sometimes God begins to speak like that. 
Because you can feel the anointing, you can feel God speak through it. So it's not always like, a, well, you need to, or it don't know how to be, thus saith the Lord. The anointing can just rise up and the Spirit takes over. It's not coming from, I thought this thing out, my natural mind, or whatever. You feel God, unction. And a lot of times it can move throughout a whole congregation. And you can begin to feel it. Sometimes I can move through and somebody else is sitting there and not feeling nothing. Hey, my fault they didn't receive the word. God was still, that don't mean he wasn't speaking. He was still speaking. Because one person receives and another person doesn't, doesn't mean that person is not spiritual either. The word might have been for you. And it still was the prophet, the body. Understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, and, and I, so I say that even out of love because I, I've been guilty. Uh, of prejudging and judging people based upon what I received, but they didn't. Mm. You know, and so I, I, had to, I had to watch that. I had to be careful. And I, I, I got that's something I had to still watch. You know, and be careful that I, I don't judge someone according to what they did not receive because I received it. Maybe I just maybe I just received it. You know, then there's things I understand that you don't understand. There's things you understand that I don't understand. But just because you don't understand it don't make you less of a person or less of a child of God. It doesn't necessarily make you immature. You just, you just, it's just not clicking for you yet. But once it clicks, then that's when the faith takes hold. And so that's what I'm kind of understanding about this whole kingdom concept in that regard too where there's certain aspects that just, it just hasn't clicked with me. And since it hasn't clicked, you know, it's just someone who wants to, get, wants to get the Holy Ghost. I said they got baptized, but they haven't really received the Holy Ghost yet. Now, you have some people who don't really feel like it's a necessity. Well, guess what? They don't feel like it's a necessity. More than likely, they'll never get it. And, and, and God will judge them at the end. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not saying some people on their way to hell. I would, but I can't necessarily say that. You have some people who live good, respectable lives but they feel like it's not necessary. Well, they might feel like it's not necessarily for a lot of reasons, which number one I would say is maybe because of heresy or false, t false teaching that has done blocked their mind. And since it's blocked their mind, it also has blocked their faith. And, they, and, and so their faith can't grab a hold of it. And they just don't get it and they just don't see it. But once they see it, now God can begin to activate. Once you begin to see it, once faith sees it, then it begins to come act a part in your life. You know, anyway, that makes sense. And so then the other one was comfort. You know, consultation, healing of distress, sorrow, um, of per persecution. Um, you know, I talked about governance. There ought to be some controlling of the gift of prophecy. You know, Paul gives us, so the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Meaning, you know, to say, I can't control myself, that's not true. You can, you can control yourself. Because God ain't forcing us. You know, there are times that you, sometimes you might not want to control yourself. You just want, man, I just want to go, I just want to go. But to say you can't control yourself, but to say I'm moving in the spirit of prophecy, and I can't help but to say, no, you, you can, you can help. Paul even gives governance to say maybe two or three at the most. Uh, too many more than that can then maybe damage a congregation. He talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 29. He talks about, you know, and if one prophesy, let it be between two or three. And, and that's what kind of bring us some governance, bring us some discipline to the order of service. And you have to remember, is is uh, when you begin to read chapter, we'll read the book of Corinthians, period. And by the time you get to ver chapter 5 is when he deals with the man that was sleeping with his stepmom. Talks about him being puffed up rather than mourning. And y'all, and I, there's, there's strife among you. You know, I hear that there's even heresy among you. There's division. Is, is in sense, as, as, as carnal as some of the things he begins to mention, there was a very spiritual church as well. And so, you know, it's like, you know, you've got these things, but you, you guys are a powerful church, but y'all just need to get some discipline within your services also. There ought to be some structure, there ought to be some governance. Yes, ma'am. So, should most pastors have, a, a, like, a slight gift of prophecy because of 
like for people's gifts, basically, because how do you help um, to us to recognize what our gifts are and strengthen our gifts, I guess? I, I think I think uh, a pastor should um, be able to be able to pick up and be able to discern where to begin to guide. Yes, okay. yes. Um, that wouldn't necessarily maybe come under the prophecy, but it can. Um, yes, yes, yes. I I, I believe so. Um, but with with that being said, you know, like there there are things that I've I've never experienced. Like already in my mind, there there are people that I want to connect here in this congregation with some other people. Because I know that they, let's say, a higher level of anointing or they move in this particular area. Or I want them, I want, say, I want you to be able to get experience in this area. Right. And so I'm going to connect you with so-and-so. So at times, maybe y'all can get together. You know, I ain't, trying to, I ain't trying to send you out and ask you to leave. But I mean, if you do, you do. But, but I feel like part of my job, part of that nurturing is to be able to steer you, to be able to guide you so you can begin to pull out the best in you. And, and whatever things I can help, because I, I don't have it all. I don't have, to me that's where the body comes in. At the same token, there, there are, that has to be governed. I have to be able to feel confident in the person that I'm entrusting you with. Because I couldn't just hook you up with the devil. And that could be messed up. You understand what I mean? So I mean like so like so what you're saying is right though, being able to see because of teaching and because of hearing the word and learning about some of it, I'm able to better to discern and actually see some of the characteristics that I wasn't able to see until I got that knowledge and the understanding in the word. Which I'm grateful for. Um, who was it? I think Brother Dodson gave me two sets of CDs. It was like a whole series. One was about ten hours long. The other one was probably probably about the same. Um, of a I forget. I think his name was Apostle John Eckhart or something. I think it was before he kind of went off. He kind of went off. But I think he's kind of coming back. But anyway, when we went to West Virginia uh, a year or two ago, that wasn't last year. It was it the year before? Maybe a couple of years ago, you know. So I, I downloaded them all on my phone. So we driving through the night. I'm listening to the word all night long. But he's breaking down the fivefold ministry and stuff. And I'll just be honest. I had, a, I had I, I've listened to it again since then. But it's, it's it's just I'm on vacation, but I'm I'm wired. It's helping me stay awake. But I, I'm try, I, I needed to learn. Because the truth of the matter is, I've had nobody ever teach me that. I've never really heard it taught. And being able to recognize, you know, that. And so it really helped my understanding and hearing about the five-fold ministry, how to know what's what, and, you know, the characteristics of a prophet, of a teacher, of a pastor, of an evangelist. And it really helped me be able to open. And then I began to really discern, and it's like, okay. Okay, I can see that. That's good. But I needed that word. So, like, even me going through this, dealing with the spiritual gifts, I hope going through it, man, to jog somebody to kind of be like, hey, I kind of want to dive into this a little bit more. See what I move in more in. Or, hey, when God does use me, I recognize, hey, that's, that's the gift of so-and-so. Hey, that was a word of knowledge. That was a word of wisdom. You know, man, that was interpretation of tongues to kind of be able to know what it's all about. All right, number two. Uh, diverse kinds of tongues. is given to edify the church and should be interpreted to benefit the whole body. It's also saying, is the ministry of proclaiming in a public meeting a message from God in a language not understood by the person giving it? He doesn't know the language, therefore it comes from the Holy Spirit and not his mind. Meaning I've stood here and spoken Russian I don't know how to speak Russian. So it didn't come from my natural mind. It came from the Holy Spirit. And actually spoke. Um, I was listening to Perry Stone. He was talking about an older guy. Man, I wish I, were, I, wish I could remember his name. Oh, Smith man, I wish Wigglesworth? I could remember his name. Huh? Smith Wigglesworth? Not that one, but he's good too. But he was saying him and his dad was going to a small town and the preacher felt 
the spirit say, stop and go in here to this place. Walked into this little bitty shop. It was a German guy. He walked in there and spoke German to the guy. He didn't know German. Matter of fact, he had a third grade education. That's as far as his education went. But he often moved in many of the spiritual gifts. Walked in there and spoke German to the guy and basically proclaimed and told him, God has given you another chance. He is speaking to you right now for you to, I mean, God, like, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember all word for word. Basically change your ways. And he said, and the guy began to curse in German. He understood he's saying something in German that wasn't right. And he said, let's go. He didn't want to hear. The next time they came to that town, they said that guy died not long after that. Yes, sir. Now, what was that? The word, the word, knowledge, word of wisdom. What was he, what was he going? He, he was, he was, he was in Dallas. He was speaking in, in, an, in an unknown tongue. I mean, not unknown tongue. He was speaking in German. So he was using a gift of diverse kinds of tongues. So he had to also be operating. In, you know. In, in, in so he had also kind of been a word of knowledge, but it really was a word of knowledge to that individual. But he was speaking in, a, in diverse kinds of tongues. He's speaking in his language. He understood what he was saying. When I say he understood it, the guy receiving it. But he also even understood that God was proclaiming this to him. So he also had an interpretation of what God was actually even speaking. But he didn't know German. So he had to be also operating in the office of faith, too, to be able to just move on that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, in one sense, yeah, 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 yeah in one sense, yeah. I mean, I mean the gift of faith is just a, just a little different, but, but there's faith to know that God is using me. So anytime there's true faith, when you have that true faith like that, obedience is going to run in conjunction with that. Man. You know, when you operate in a faith, man, obedience run in conjunction. You know, that, that's what I'm saying, you know, I mean, I, I just try to think, Lord, how many times... You know, would I be fearful? Would I allow fear, my own fear, to stifle the faith? Or would you say, stop there, go in there and speak to this man? And by this time, though, he's already been groomed. You know, he's already, this ain't the first time he's moved like that. Right. So it's not like it's like this is the first time. I mean, even when I was listening to the testimony, this wasn't the first time he'd moved often. So I believe it's by graduation, if you will. But... I said there's a graduation. However, if God wants to just get me on a real big one right now, he can do that. All I'm asking, what I'm asking, Lord, I want your gifts to flow through me. I want to be able to move in faith. I, I want to move the fear out and just obedient to your word. Yes, sir. That's why Clarence is saved. Mm -hmm. and, uh, no one went and spoke in tongues, but his aunt had died. I hadn't seen him in several years, and I'd been praying and worried about him and caring, you know, wanting him to know about this mm -hmm. salvation, this kingdom, and Christ, this Jesus. And driving, Lord told me to pull into this Kroger out there at Austinville. Mm -hmm. Had no clue, and I'm in my mind arguing a little. And then I said, well, I'm going to buy some fruit. And went in, in the fruit department, there was my cousin that I've been wanting to see. <laughs> and told him, next thing you know, he's coming to Agape, and mm -hmm. he's still, still there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what? And God got all kinds of stuff like that for you. That's for everybody. Yeah, it's for everybody. And but he, he uses you like that. A little bit more often than he does me. You gotta try him. I know, I gotta try. I'm trying to grab a hold of what you got. Man, I'm I just I'm receiving <laughs> it. I'm receiving it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean that's just the truth. I mean, but you you have that soul winning, you have that you have that. Evangelistic, but I was I haven't the, I, I, I let it die though, and you, that's what I'm that's what you've been seeing is I'm getting that back. That, that. you know, you, you know, it, you, you might allow it to go stagnant, but it ain't it been removed from you. Gifts and calling is without repentance, Amen. he don't give you a gift and take it back. No, he doesn't. So, what he's already anointed you for is always there. Now, you might stop for a moment and decide to go my own way and do my own thing for a while, but that gift is always ready, waiting for you to operate and walk right back in it. And evangelist being going out. going out, winning souls. You just got to, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got, he's got, he's, he's got a strong anointing on him. 
you know, in, in that area. Uh, Elder Bethay has a strong anointing in evangelizing. It's almost like if he ain't talking to someone about the Lord, he almost don't even feel right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I have a question. You know how when you say, you know, I'm just going to let the Lord speak, right? Mm -hmm. Is he clearly just taking over you, period? Or or is he telling you what to say and you're kind of going to just repeat it to us? Like, for example, like when that guy spoke in German, did he just boom it or did the Lord like... So zoom, 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 and then he just like repeated the zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay. So with that, with that particular, so he's allowed the Holy Ghost was speaking through him and speaking in Germany. And he just doing it. It wasn't his, it wasn't his mind. It was not, he had to do it. He had to be obedient and open his mind. God needed the body. But it wasn't through his natural mind. Okay. But it's different than, say, preaching. Preaching. Is it by the Holy Spirit or, the, or, the, or, the, or a gift? Preaching is not a gift. You, you're just proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming the good news. Your natural mind, your mind is also involved. However, it is inspired and anointed by God. But you have, but it's not just all Holy Spirit. You're also there also. So I can say, you know, God is speaking to me and say thus, you know, say it the Lord, which it, I might be just preaching or giving a message, but it might, have not necessarily, it might have been inspired and anointed, but it wasn't by one of the gifts. Okay, does that make sense a little bit? Yeah. So when you actually move in, in that gift, I mean, it's all God. I, like I, you know, for him, he didn't know German. Right. It's all Holy Spirit just speaking through him. Just, just, just moving and doing it. And, and so that's the same thing when we'll get to the power gifts probably ne next week um, like the miracles it's either the miracles or the faith I think the miracles there are some physical or human involvement and in the gift of faith there's no human involvement other than speaking forth the word but we'll get to that part but we get that part so yeah so there, there's always a, a person involved in a sense but from what aspect of the man it comes from. Okay, so man is triune, spirit, soul, and body. You know, the body, we just kind of dismiss that. But the soul, you know, is you have your own will, your own personality, your own self. And then you have your spirit man. But your spirit man was dead, but now is al made alive through Christ. Your spirit man has a lie, is alive. You want the Holy Spirit to be able to use your spirit man, which have sealed your spirit, to help save your soul. You want your spirit to override your own soul man. It's our soul man a lot of times what gets us in trouble, but it gets manifested in our body. Okay. God set this thing up, though, that he won't operate without man. That don't mean he can't. He does miraculous things. He does things, but he uses people as instruments. Sometimes he uses other things than people, but he uses something here on this earth. He used a donkey to speak to Balak, is that his name? Balaam. 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 He used the donkey to speak to Balaam to keep him from going to try to curse. So he, but he still used something to bring about God's plan. He, Balaam's about to get struck down. The donkey kept moving off to the side and started being stubborn. He's slapping. He's been, finally, the donkey said, Hey, I've been with you all this time. I mean, come on. Now he's having a conversation with the donkey like this is just normal. I mean, first time, I mean, it doesn't say he was like, You know, he fell down because the donkey spoke. He just now he's speaking to the donkey. And then God opened his eyes and allowed him to see the angel that was standing there with a flaming sword, or standing there with a sword, was going to take his life if he kept on going. But God, God uses people. So, um, in 1 Corinthians 14 and 4, it says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. Okay? Um, 14.27 says, If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, 
and that by a chorus and let one interpret. Okay, so so diverse kinds of tongues. So you might have somebody just speaking in different tongues, but you also, if you just you know, what he's trying to bring some again, bring some governance to the body, and that's why he also said, I'd rather speak in five words of understanding than ten thousand words. I've got to use a thousand words of no understanding. You know, it's not going to do any good for me to stand up here and teach this whole lesson in tongues. And everybody like, okay, that, that might have been cool in the first couple of minutes, but, I mean, he's still going. It's like 45 minutes now, and like, what is he really talking about? It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't fruitful. It wasn't fruitful at all. Then somebody ought to be able to get some kind of interpretation. And uh, different, um, this is just part of my notes, Different from the initial sign of the infilling of the Holy Ghost or per initial prayer language. So again, when you talk about that a little bit on the day of Pentecost, two things happened. They had the individual prayer language, that unknown tongue, and then there was also the gift of tongues that went forth that the others heard and understood the languages. And there was many different languages that went forth. Um, so I don't want to get too tongues or edify, edify is the spirit. The tongues edifies the spirit man. You know, I mean, he, he talks about, um, you know, it, it, it ought to be something that ought to be exercised. You know, I mean, in, in your prayer time, in your alone time, to think that there's no edification, no, there, there's a building up of it. He that speaketh an unknown tongue, it says he does what? Edifies, he builds up, he strengthens, he encourages. It encourages your soul. It strengthens your soul. Sometimes you don't even know, understand how it is or what it's doing, but it really is strengthening and encouraging you at times when you don't even realize it. And sometimes it'll give you that substance to be able to hold on to. Because God has went to bat for you and prayed a prayer. He told Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. You know, so the same thing. So Jesus prayed for Peter. A lot of times through the Spirit, he's praying on your behalf. He's praying for you. Because he don't want your faith to fail either. Yes, sir. I was thinking, he said, because of the heavenly, all of our blessings are in the heavenly realm. He's blessed us. Christ has blessed us with all mm -hmm. blessings in the heavenly realm. He's given them to us. And to access them, we need that language. Yes. Uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. In the book, he gave like seven different things that why why speak in tongues. One is the evidence of the Holy Ghost. It says it's your prayer language. With tongues, you magnify God. That's Acts ten forty six. They spoke and they magnify God. Um, number four, tongue edifies. Getting from First Corinthians fourteen. Um, it's a source of intercessory prayer. Going from Romans with groanings with utters. You know, they cannot be, uh, with groanings, they cannot be uttered. uttered. There you go. I was getting that messed up. Um, another one, he says, a source of spiritual refreshing. Pick that up from Isaiah chapter 28, um, which says, man, which, which, uh, this is a good scripture. I'll read it real quick. Let me grab it. Isaiah 28, and uh, starting, I think it's 11 and 12. For with stammering lips and other tongues will he speak to this people. Verse 12, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. And he said, but yet they would not hear. He was already prophesying, already letting them know, with stammering lips and other tongues, I'm going to speak to my people. This is going to be that rest. It's going to be a refreshing to the soul and to the spirit. So there's a refreshing in it also. Um, and it's to profit everybody. Okay, I want to talk about this real quick and then we'll dismiss and pick back up next week. The interpretation of tongues is a supernatural showing forth by the Holy Spirit of the meaning of utterance in other tongues. Um, it's the showing forth by the Holy Spirit uh, you see it, yeah, it's in your, it's the, I'm sorry, it's the supernatural showing forth by the Holy Spirit of the meaning of an utterance in tongues. So, um, like she was trying to say, well, um, stepdad or whatever he said thus said the Lord such and such a tongue had went forth and then he had spoke and I, I, I've seen it happen a few times I remember the very first time I seen it happen was at a guy 
Some people got it, some people didn't. Some people got it, some people didn't. Some people were was very critical and judgmental. But it happened like I heard that it happened. When it happened, I felt it. It was even towards the end of the service, we had a guest speaker. And Is that the African guy? No, not the, no, it was a different one. It was a different one. No, he, he lives here. Um, he was a guest speaker. He began to speak. Now, it was towards the end of the service. I mean, because we was already his ministers. We were standing up waiting for souls to come. And, I mean, he got quiet. He kind of got quiet. He had started speaking in tongues. And one of the other preachers, I mean, they, they, they knew each other. I mean, then he started giving an interpretation of what it is. Again, not a translation, but an interpretation. And, you know, I'm standing up there, I'm, I'm, I'm getting geek. Now, I'm, I remember I was like on this side of the pulpit. I was like, oh, Lord, just speak, Lord. I was like, wow, I'm, you know, finally getting to see this, getting to, getting to witness it. Um, I remember uh, one of the sisters was asking me because she knew I had prayed about that and talked about it a couple of times. She said, "Did you, did you, did you catch that?" And just yeah, I caught it. I was caught. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, a couple other people were like, "Did you really believe that?" I was like, "Yeah, why not?" Well, I heard it was saying they they do that quite a bit. Do what? I said, "But just because they know how to move in their gift, and we don't." I speak in tongues quite a bit. Does that mean I ain't, I ain't real? I mean, I mean, I was like, I mean, you believe it, you don't have to. I, I, I choose to believe it. I said, if it resonated with me, I said, if it ain't, ain't going to resonate with you, it's not going to resonate with you anyway because you don't believe it. I said, but I'm not going to shoot, shoot them down just because we don't operate in it. But we got to brought. I said, but it's still our part of the body. So yeah, I always gonna get some of those. Yes, yes sir. So interpretation is giving bits and pieces of it, and translation that, is giving the whole. Interpretation is like a paraphrase, if you will. Yeah. 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 Interpretation is like a paraphrase. It's not necessarily word for word. You know, it's a it's a paraphrase. The spirit of it. Yeah, the spirit. And a lot of times you can have a couple, a couple people. Give an interpretation. That's why I say, if it's going to be interpretation two at the most, three, or if I'm not going to prophesy two at most, three, there's usually a theme. There's usually some connection. You know, you know, most time I've seen it, I've seen it happen um, at Whitehorse. I've been at Whitehorse, and I've seen two or three give an interpretation. I've seen it, and you can, you can catch the theme. And, and, and part of the themes, they, they connected. Well, it sounded like it was. I can't even remember one, but let's just say one said fire, so somebody about the fire, somebody else said something about the water, somebody else said something about the wind. When you was like, man, it seemed like three different things. Now really what they were talking about the elements that God uses to begin to move in his people. Fire, wind, and water. So, so I mean, so there was a connection in what they had said, even though it may have seemed like it was something, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, we're just, yeah, it was just pretty awesome to sometimes begin to experience, you know, and I've, I've seen it happen a few times there, you know, especially through the gift of prophecy and, and, and Pastor Jeff Johns, like, I, I like going there. I like watching him. I love to, I love to watch him, because see, I'm watching a whole lot of things. I'm watching other people. But I'm also watching him from a leadership standpoint. And to watch him flow and to operate and allow the spirit to flow and to operate and even allow others to exercise their gift just blows my mind. Just it gets me excited, it gets me hyped. Because I've never seen anything like it. You know, if, you know, if you haven't really been a whole lot of places, you just get used to this, you know. So, but to actually see him flow, and I mean, he's always working, even when it don't seem like he's working, he's working, and, and you, and I, I just sit back and watch, and I'll be taking notes. I mean, you know, mental notes, sometimes actual notes, for like, ooh, he did that, like, ooh, that's good. You know, and then sometimes I'll talk to Pastor Kirkley about it, he'll share things about him, things he do, and a lot of times, often when he speaks, he'll, he'll mention certain things. 
I don't know if anybody noticed, you know, the reason why I did such and such, not because I did anything wrong. His verbiage is very good. He was excellent verbiage, relevant, and he makes it easy. He makes it feel at ease. And so I pick up things from that also. You know, it's, it's just good. Um, uh, if someone speaks, if someone speaks in tongues and there's not an interpretation, it could be there might not have been somebody with the gift present, or God didn't use somebody with that gift. It could be somebody was just magnifying God for that one to, you know. So it's possible. Sometimes it's possible that the gift is there, but they nervous or scared. A lot of times we're nervous or scared to move. It's like, man, I feel like the Spirit is saying this. I don't know, I still don't remember how, what prompted me and Kelly and Lisa to talk about it. We talked about it in an open form, even I think, I think I taught Bible class that night. But we prayed first. And we talked about the shift. We talked about, it was like an interpretation of what God was saying. Um, I remember them even saying, like he went from assistant pastor to Pastor Ash for that interim, for that moment. You know, he wasn't just talking as assistant pastor or Brother Vincent. He moved, he transitioned because of the whole theme of prayer. And I can't remember what God said, but we, we, we stated it publicly. Well, we all was in agreement. It, it resonated with our spirit. We could, we could feel that. You could feel the shift in the congregation. Now, everybody might not got the same message, but we did vocalize the message. I mean, those who got it, they got it, but you can feel the shift in the congregation. So that was an interpretation of the tongue, of, of what was being said, and, and how God moved in that. You know, it kind of was actually even a blend of gift of prophecy, because it encouraged, it built up, it lifted up and encouraged the people. I mean, it was a... So, I mean, as I say, a lot of these gifts, they intertwine. It's not like sometimes just one, and it's not a thing like, no, it wasn't the prophecy, it was tongues. I mean, I wish you would get that thing right. Please, really? I mean, really? Are you going to nitpick over something like that? God is moving. Quit tripping. You know, I mean, you know, we, we I mean, if we don't do these things in love, I mean, that, that's why he says, you know, allow your gift and anything we do, love ought to be our greatest motivation. You know, if we're not using love and it's not moving through love, then maybe we just need to be quiet. That's why he goes through it. You know, you notice he got chapter 12 dealing with the gifts, and then he moves on to love in chapter 13, and then he picks back up with the gifts, mainly dealing with the interpretation of tongues and get the prophecy. Why he stick that love in between? Because it's like if you ain't got no love, this ought to be your greatest motivator for moving in any gift. It's through love. If not, your gift don't mean nothing. You're just speaking. You're just sounding brass and tinkling symbols. You know, so I mean, I, I, want, I want to be able to operate. I want love to flow through me. I just want to be able to be used. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. You know what? I, that's all I can do is stay hungry and thirsty. I, I, I believe there will be some things that will come to pass. I, I mean, I, I believe that. I also believe there will be some things that may come to pass that maybe I won't see, but somebody, let's just say my next generation, if you will, will see. Not because I just didn't believe or anything like that. It was just maybe for the next person to see. When you look through Scripture, some of the people, some people died before they got to see the Messiah. Yet they knew the Messiah was coming. They wanted to see the Messiah, but it just wasn't time for them to step on the scene. That didn't make them lose hope in God. They was hoping. They just passed on the scene. It wasn't time for him to come. They still died in faith, in hope. Does that make sense? But then there were some who got the, who hoped for it and got to see it. Uh, is it Zacharias? Who was it? One of the older men, it's either it's in one of the Gospels at the very beginning. It said, and, and, and he waited for this moment, and before he died, you know, it was revealed to him. God showed him that Christ Messiah has now come. Huh? Yeah, when he was a baby. Yeah, yeah, that's why 
which, which was like now, boom, I can die and go home. You know, I, I've seen the promise. So there's some things that, that, that I already know, like God is going to do. And it's like, so I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting, and I, yeah, I, I get impatient sometimes. No, I do. I get impatient. I just, I just really want to die. But it, it, it'll happen. I mean, that's just true. It, it'll happen. Me not believing it ain't doing me no good. I mean, I, I, I gotta believe it. I know it's possible. All I can do is just stay hungry and thirsty after Him. You know, I, I ask. You know, and I, I still ask, Lord, I, I, Lord, let Your gifts flow through me. Lord, use me. And when it's time for you to use me, help me move out my own mind, any of my own fears, let me just be obedient to your call. Obedient to your word. Because I can mess me up. I mess me up. Again, I mean, I'm telling you, my mind ain't no different than some of y'all sometimes. I mean, I, I, over, I, I do overanalyze things. I'm like, oh, is that really what you're trying to It's like, are you really saying? Then I mean, I do. I'm like, okay, if you really want me to do this, when I throw this paper down, Make it pop back up here on the pulpit by itself. <laughs> and that's what I want to do. Lord, when I put this fleece down, let the ground be wet yeah. and the fleece dry. Yeah, it's like I, I do. I want some dramatic. Okay, Lord, I mean, please. Okay, this time, make the fleece wet and the dry ground dry. If you do it then, I'm a, I'm a no. What'd you say? We're paying. Well, we are. I mean, but, but, but. But that'd be my mind. But it's flesh. But it, it's just flesh. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm asking God to get that out of me. I'm asking God to get that out of me. Yes, ma'am. Um, will there come an opportunity where God tells you to do something you don't do it, and it's on you heavy to do it, and you don't do it? You think that opportunity will come back again, that same thing? It can. Yeah, it can. I mean, I know it has for me before. Yeah, it can. I mean, I can't, I can't say once the opportunity is gone, it's never going to come. I can't say that. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of, I, I'm trying to think of any opportunities that came, that got missed and never came back again. I honestly can't think of one right now. I'm trying to think of an example on the Bible. That's why he has us go apologize. That opens up the opportunity if we missed it. Like if it's something we did mm -hmm. something wrong, right. even us going back gives him an opportunity to open a communication. I, mean, I, mean, I, I just, yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I can't think of any example that God only gave one opportunity and you missed it. Oh well, I just can't think of anyone. Anybody else thinking of anybody? Samson got a second chance even after he messed up. He was in the prison, lost both eyes and everything. And he, he got a chance to yeah, he petitioned the kingdom. Yes. And he's out. Give him his strength back. He's going to knock it to him this time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. But yet, yes, he still had certain things had to happen, though, even for his strength to come back. Not only just asking, but his strength was where? In his hair. In his hair. His hair started to also grow back. So it's like, man, I might have missed the opportunity this time. I realize I missed the opportunity. Okay, so I mean, how, how can my hair growing, his hair growing back, you know, be relevant to the day? I missed the opportunity. I understand I missed the opportunity. If this is not for me to, time to just say, oh, forget it. Then you know what? I just need to come back and write alignment. That's all he did was come back and write alignment. And you know what? My strength might be part of my prayer. Just keep on the opportunity to present itself again. You know, and, when, and then... I mean, I, yeah, I mean, God, I, I just, man, I can't see him just not bringing an opportunity around again. I know he's done it for me many, many times. Yes, ma'am. Now, when do you kind of, if you get the, the gist of what our gift is, when do you let us know? I mean, when do you tell us? You'll get the gist. Okay, yeah, but some of, some of it is you'll get the gist before I will. Some, a lot of times. You know, it, it's a little different than... Let me say it like this. Uh, I know some people who came and said, you know, I'm, I have a call to ministry. Well, I didn't know they had a call to ministry before they got called. Not, not all the time. There's some people, there's some, not all the time. See, like God don't always give me everything. Now, some, I say it like that because there, there are sometimes you can see, let's just say again, a call to ministry on somebody's life. 
I mean, I just, I just feel that. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I, could really, I really believe God has a call in ministry on this person's life. Okay. Well, how long does it take for us to get it? I don't, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just that. saying, like, you know, I feel like I'm going to be 30, and I don't know what my gift is, and I'm sitting around, and I'm like, mm -hmm. me brother Keith came in after me, and he know what it is. <laughs> But, but see, you don't realize that you've moved, you've moved in the gift of prophecy right here in this church during testimony service. And so I'm not saying that, that the gift of prophecy and being a prophet is two different things. I'm just saying, but you have moved in the gift of prophecy right in this church. How do I know that? Because there was a time you got up to give your testimony in a transition from Katika to the anointing and power and the Spirit of God to begin to bring about edification, exhortation, and comfort to this whole congregation and move this whole congregation totally different. Shift the whole atmosphere. Not because of your own natural mind, your own thought. It's like, I mean, you, you, it wasn't like even like you. It's like, yeah, you, you had your thought, you had your things together, you had your remember to get up on the set, and then God shipped you and shipped this whole congregation. So, is that, is that, is that your gift that you're stronger in? Could be. I, I, that part, I don't know. That part, I don't know. So, at what, what, what time do I tell an individual what their gift is? I, I, I can't even answer that. I wish I could. I, I don't have an answer. Um, other, I mean, other than giving I me, mean, if God tells me to let someone know, then I would. I, I think there is it's very important to, for a person, for an individual, to really ask God. And I, I, I get what you're saying because I'm, believe me. Please understand, I'm not like up here and saying something. I mean, I'm, I'm really not trying to be like that because there's things I'm asking God for. There's some things I don't understand. Okay? And I'm, and I'm waiting for an answer. Like, Lord, I'm just, are you hearing me here? Like, I'm crying out. Like, I'm asking. Well, I haven't got an answer yet. That's not going to keep me from not asking unless she just shuts me down. There has been times where I like, don't ask me about that again. It's like, he doesn't say, don't you ask me. No, I felt it in my spirit. When I went to go ask, I almost felt convicted for asking. So then I stopped. You know, that makes sense? So most of us, usually that spirit man begins to speak. But, if I'm like, he ain't convicting me for asking, I'm, I'm asking. I'm like, I'm still asking. And, I, and I'll just be honest, from a flesh standpoint, from my own man, my own will, sometimes it gets a little nerve-wracking because I feel like you, I just... Come on, I don't need no parable. I don't need a story. I just need you to say this. When I, when I say, I, I, don't, I don't, when I say, sometimes I'm, I'm just in here by myself, and I'm saying, Lord, do you hear me? I, I mean that literally, and I, I say that. I say that literally. I'm saying, so, you, you, like, you're not fighting something that nobody else can identify with. Like, we can, I mean, I, I, there's times I will sit right here. <coughs> Sometimes with tears, sometimes not. And I'll be like, come on, do you hear me? I know, then I say, I know you hear me, but can you come on, give me, can you give me something? I feel like you got me out here. Can you just give me something? And it, it might not happen right away. And then there's, then there's times somebody give me a testimony or give me something. And and I hear him like, oh man, I'm glad. And then an hour or two later, he said, you asked me to give you something, so you always just wanting this, you expecting this, and I just gave you some encouragement. So, um, like you, you, you that, that's why I said reading and getting an understanding of the gifts. Sometimes we begin to move in the gifts, and we didn't even realize we were moving in the gifts. Until we get the understanding of it. You would have never even thought about that or knew that. You were like, well, that was me. I mean, it was like, you know, that was God beginning to move you. You felt the anointing. You felt the, it was boom. 
you know, you know, some of us are like, man, I want to move in a miraculous, or I want to move in the faith. You know, I, I do too, and I'm praying for that. I'm, I'm asking God. I'm, I'm asking God. I, I want to move in that too. You know, in some sense, it, it took faith like Abraham to leave my country, leave my kindred, and move here in Annapolis. You know, he told Abraham, get up and go. You know, that took faith. You know, other people, their mind was kind of like blown, and we would travel three hours one way just to go to church. I, I, there was times we were tired. We knew we were going to have to eventually make that move. We couldn't just keep on traveling. But I can honestly say for myself, not one time did I ever feel like, oh, I'm tired of doing this. This is crazy. I was, I was glad to do it. I was excited to do it. It was a rest to do it. Does that make sense? I mean, I, I felt at ease to be able to do it. Never once, yeah, physically tired going back, didn't want to leave. Because it's like, I'm going back. And now I'm going to a place that I really can't call home because God has already moved me from that home to another home. And so, but it took faith to be able to leave all that and just be able to come. Well, other people are like, man, I don't know how y'all did that. I mean, it was God. I mean, that's all I can say. I'm saying it was God, but it also took us in obedience unto God. You know, and so I'm grateful for that. So I mean, it's just like little, it's like little, little things like that. Um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll be praying for you, and I'll be asking God also. You know, if there's something that I need to share with you in, in regards to that. But I mean, I'm serious, man. So I, mean, I want you to be, I want you to pray and keep asking God, and I'm gonna ask Him too. Is there anything that I need to share? I, I, I do feel like He's starting to help me. To be able to help you, to bring you, uh, let's say maybe alongside the right people. Then there comes a, a, a work that you have to do in that, in allowing me to. And then there are obedience to it. I'm not talking about subject and bow down all that, but just obedience. And you might not even understand why. There, there's great power. And giving the getting the revelation and understanding rather than me giving it to you. The whole there's some substance to it that comes deeper when you get it rather than me giving it to you. So that's all I can do is kind of like speak from that that wisdom from that standpoint. Does that make sense? You know, when you know something about yourself, can't nobody take it from you. If I tell you something, other people can deceive you. And make you be like, mm, but when you know it for yourself, they can't shake you. You might have battles in your mind at times. The devil might even come us, but you know at the end of the day, uh, I know this for a fact. Yes. He'll confirm it. No, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Yes, and then yeah, you, and then Brother Matt. I would say I had the most amazing experience on our way back from Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Um, I really didn't have a. I didn't talk to a whole lot of people when I was there. We did a lot of sightseeing, but on the on the plane ride back. The plane was packed. There wasn't an empty seat. Mm -hmm. And so I had to sit in the middle seat. Yes. And I was next to, obviously, a stranger. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the Lord the whole way back. And he began to speak things to me. Mm -hmm. Now, he's thinking I'm encouraging him. And I'm thinking he's encouraging me. And mm -hmm. we're both blessing each other. But now, yes. even sitting in Bible class, the man was prophesying to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, because he began to tell me who I am. And he began to, and I said... I have a love for young people and all the time. He began to call me a minister. And mm -hmm. before long, he was calling me a teacher. Before long, he was like, you're a preacher. I kept on, mm -hmm. I'm not telling him, he's telling me. Yes. Because the truth of the matter, with all my natural events and prayer in my life lately, lately I'm like, I need a hiatus. I mm -hmm. need a break. Yes. Because I'm not focused. I feel like my work rock is too big and I mm -hmm. want to be this smart, but I cry. But mm -hmm. he began to remind me who I was in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Yes. I mean, it's what, when you said... Because he wasn't really speaking anything new to me. He was speaking what I needed at that moment. Yes. He remember who I was. He was exhorting. He was edifying. He was bringing comfort to me. Yes. Even to remind me who I Jesus. was in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I began to, I, I told him this. I said, or I said this myself. I, I'm thinking the whole time, are you really real? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking, Edgar, are you real? Are you an angel next to me? Mm -hmm. To the fact where, 
as we got the plane, we got our luggage, I looked back, mm -hmm. and I would give my hug on purpose, I was like, I want to make sure this man is natural, <laughs> right. and not an angel. Yes. And he was supposed to actually call me today, he's in Indianapolis only for three days. Mm -hmm. He's working here, he was supposed to come to church, but if he was, he could 12 hours, I'm mm -hmm. thinking, was he really Edgar, or was he an angel still to that I'm wondering? Mm -hmm. God said he was to me just, right. just because I needed that. Yeah, amen, absolutely. I, I, absolutely. I mean, see, why not? Like, we, we, we have to get past in our minds sometimes co the thought of coincidence. Yeah. Yes, yes. A, 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 apart from divine connection and divine opportunities and divine, you know, and, and having that, as he said, the kingdom mindset of why not? It's a right. It's a right. You, you know, it, it's, it's part of our right. You know, yeah, he said I'm there next to you. you he said you there. You know, because you need that. I mean, and, and that was kind of almost a blend, you know. That man has the Spirit of God. That was could have been a blend of, of prophesying and a word of knowledge. Sometimes a word of knowledge ain't sometimes a whole thing, but it began to say things that he did not know. That's correct, right? About you. Maybe he maybe he just discerned it. Because, you know, as I say, a lot of these gifts begin to cross over. However, it, it's part of the body this, to edify us as a body. And you don't you don't know when God is gonna send somebody away and begin to Yeah, I feel you, I know exactly what you're saying. I mean that's how I, I feel like it just happened to me just within the past week or something. It was like somebody began to say something wasn't someone much of that said something new begin to speak to me and I mean it's just I was like, Lord I thank you. Like I like I needed that. Like I just needed that encouragement. It was another uh pastor or whatever, maybe it was like, well, I, like, I, like I needed that. They don't even realize how bad I needed to hear that right now. I need, oh, I needed to hear that. Yes, sir. Brother Manny? Oh, I was going to, um, brain froze. Mm. Trying to remember your, uh, oh, the, he'll confirm your gift. The Lord will reveal the gift to you in your in your heart, in your mind, and spirit, and then he'll confirm it more than anything. You 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 come with excitement or, or glee or question, Lord, and he'll confirm more than likely is one way it really happens versus him telling you or anyone else telling you. The Lord will always tell you first because it's yours. It's it's your gift. Like he gave you the Holy Ghost. That's yours. Mm -hmm. And then that there's all these other gifts. And so I'm sitting and I say playing you know, I use the word playing, I mean just spending free time Speaking in tongues will allow you to unwrap that gift that's in the spirit because it's a spiritual gift. Mm -hmm. So you need to spend time in the spirit and you speaking in tongues, you may hear your change tongue, your tongue change, who knows? Whatever gifts it is or combination, because you get several. Mm -hmm. And so you don't just look for one either, you know? Yeah. And if you don't have what you want to ask, he give you that, you know? Absolutely. And again, we, we talk about the nine spiritual gifts, which he can use anybody in, all, in any nine at any time. A lot of times, somebody seems to move stronger, one, two, three, or more. You know, but you can move in any of them. And then, the, those, these gifts are different than, say, a call to ministry. And then you have the five-fold, but then you also have ministry of helps, ministry of administrations, and governments. And we'll, like I said, we'll talk about some of those and so sometimes understanding, am I called a ministry? That can be kind of nerve-wracking sometimes because like, I'm not really for sure. Man, when you just kind of stay in prayer, God will give it to you in your spirit, man. Sometimes you might not really know. Before I, before, I mean, my pastor, they never say anything to me about me being called in ministry. I went to him first. I was kind of feeling, I mean, again, this is back when I was in Cass. When I was in Cass, I already felt the call to ministry. I kind of already knew. And then I got nervous, got scared, I started kind of run. I was like, I don't know. Then I kind of went and talked to him about it. He was just like, okay, and just start getting up in front of people more. You know, in one sense, he's thinking, that's it? You know, he's like, why don't you start leading praise service sometimes? And, you know, leading prayer. Okay. Well, he's probably kind of filling me out too, kind right. of seeing. Right. Because he might not know. But, you know, like I said, I've not ran for years, and I, and I can remember... Elder Bird, I can remember him asking me. I can remember the first time he asked me when we was over at Elder Johnson's house. And he said, uh, Are you a minister? I said, No, I just enjoy the word of God. I just enjoy the word. I just enjoy it. We just, we just going back and forth with the word. Cool. 
Okay. Think you end up asking me again. I'm like, no, don't you know, just enjoy the work. Like, let's go. Let's, you know, let's. And then, and then I just couldn't take it no more. I just 